Good morning. How are you? Are you good? <laughs> I'm good. I'm fucking very tired, though. What else is new? What else is new besides just being tired? I actually got a couple of really good nights of sleep earlier this week, so it's okay. Um, certain, uh, certain, uh, associates, possibly, could we call them that? Certain associates have been pulling on me, uh, quite hard, <laughs> and it's getting a little, you know, but I, uh, I'm not going to be spending much time here anymore, so, um, yeah, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving, which totally makes sense. Uh, new moon, uh, fourth house, Taurus, Uranus, all the all the young dudes <laughs> will hopefully show up uh, for me like they did on Mother's Day. <laughs> and of course, I'm talking about my boys, my children. Um... But yeah, because I got some moving to do. I got some moving to do. And I mostly have rocks and books. I got a lot of rocks and books. Um, you're on the bookshelf right now. These are these are some of my old books. Uh, the bottom is not so old. Um, I don't have all of my old books here, but many of them. I have two, <laughs> interestingly enough, I have two copies of the Mother Tongue book two by Kittredge and Arnold, speaking of Mother's Day, right? Um, it's a grammar book, it's a grammar textbook, uh, the Mother Tongue book two, an elementary English grammar with lessons in composition by George Lyman Kittredge and Sarah Louise R. Arnold, uh, published in Boston by Ginn and Company at the Athenaeum Press in 1903. So, um, yeah, I love textbooks, especially the old ones. Um, and uh, I don't really know why, because, well, I don't know. I guess, I guess because I'm a teacher. I guess because I am a teacher. Um, in my own way. I love the lamp. I love the lamp here. See that? Um and the acorns, <laughs> the oak leaves. It's really beautiful. Um, but I like to see the way they used to do things, and um, I'm not, I'm, I'm a Capricorn rising, you know, so I'm not so, like, attached necessarily to the tradition in the way, like, philosophically, with Pluto in the ninth house, you know, um, it's more of a, an appreciation and then, like, to show how we evolve, you know, um, and we could say, some have said, many have said, that language and grammar, um, learning these things are, like, important and the fact that we used to use so many words and um turns of speech and phrasing and composition right um that there used to be and people will look at that and say like well they were so much smarter than we are but are they <laughs> you know what i mean like is 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 a uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Is it the most efficient way to communicate? No. I don't know what my deal is with efficiency lately. Uh, here's a spelling book, the descriptive speller. A lot of the textbooks are in pretty crappy condition because they were used, you know, by kids. Um, 
This is a 1901. The compiler of the descriptive speller believes in spelling. Oh, this page is folded. Believes in spelling and in a spelling book. Okay, he believes in spelling. <laughs> George, George Aiton, Aiton, A I T O N, George B. Aiton. He believes in spelling, not only for purposes of composition and correspondence, but because it gives power over words and a power over a printed page. He believes in, in a spelling book. He believes in a spelling book because it relieves the teacher from the drudgery of writing vocabularies on the board because it relieves pupils from the trying task of reading distant words. <laughs> and because printed words are more natural to the eye. The page of a speller makes a lasting impression. All right, well, let's see what kinds of spells was fucking George up to over here, right? Okay, George. Part two, fourth grade. All right, well, we're going to go to page 22 here. Look, at this is an interesting setup. This is a pretty interesting setup we got going on here. I don't know if you can see this. All right, let me explain it to you. What is going on with my finger? Okay. Uh, page 22, exercise 66 dictation. The cuckoo in April. Come he will. In flowery May, he sings all day. In leafy June, he changes his tune. In bright July, he's ready to fly. In August, go he must. Hmm. Interesting. I'm reading it differently now. I'm reading it in come, in he, in he, in he, in go. April, will, may, day, June, tune, July, fly, August, must. April, will, may, day, June, tune, July, fly, August, must. He flowery, sings all leafy changes, his bright, ready to he. Exercise 67, our feathered friends. No, a bird is the only animal that has feathers. George just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Let's think about this, George. Are birds the only animals that have feathers? You're like, why are you waiting so long, Jess? Doy! Because <laughs> I want you to really think about it. I want you to really think about it. What else is like a feather? Right? Yeah, only birds. And dinosaurs, probably. I keep having this thought that scales are hard feathers, but they're still not feathers because they're hard, so they're scales. But, okay, so anyways, our feathered friends. So, these are the, the bird-associated words. Bill, beak, feet, wings, quills, notes, color. Why is it separated like that? Oh, they did that with all the syllables, okay. Voice haunts. Haunts? Haunts? Habits. Brood. Hatch. Young. Song. Spur. P 
plumage, which looks like plum age because it's separated by syllables, flock, migrate, which looks like me, great, crest, ornithology, ornithology. What is haunts? Why is haunts there? Okay, well here we go with exercise 68. The dictation is, "'Tis the rule of the land that when travelers meet in highway or byway, in alley or street, on foot or in wagons, by day or by night, each favor the other and turn to the right." "'Tis t t is fucking how is that? Like, this is what I'm talking about. <coughs> why even have, why have the apostrophe in the T? Look at that. Why not just T-I-S? For efficiency. Tis the rule of the land that when travelers meet, in highway or byway, in alley or street, on foot or in wagons, by day or by night, each favor the other and turn to the right. This is definitely American. Would they, could because they don't do that in, uh, in, in England, in, like, right? In Europe? Never been to Europe in this lifetime. Very interesting. Oh, what is it? Welsh words on page 144. Well, that's interesting how that just jumped out at me. Why would we be learning Welsh words? As I was just talking about, why are we going to the right? <laughs> why are we going to the right? Why are we going to the right? And then, like, because this must be an American book, and yet there's, like, this whole section now. These, this whole couple pages, sorry, you can't really see, but anyways... Exercise 434 on page 144. Celtic words, Irish, Scotch, Gaelic, or Welsh. No, when the Angles, when the Angles overran Great Britain, they, no doubt, allowed many Celts to remain. Others were driven towards the north and west, where they lived unmixed with the Angles, and became the Scotch Highlanders. The Irish, the Manx, 